Whenever I'm reviewing search accounts between Google Ads and Microsoft Ads for a potential client or whether I'm consulting for a particular client, I look to look at how they're optimizing Microsoft Ads and Google Ads. If they're implementing the same strategy, that's going to give me a lot of opportunity to give better advice. Why? Well, because there are a lot of settings within Microsoft Ads that are the same as Google, but the way they work within the channel is a lot different than how they work within Google. So in this video, I want to show you what some of those differences are. So when you're optimizing your accounts within Microsoft Ads, you're going to see better performance now that you truly understand how some of these features work. Today's video is brought to you by Shape, an all-in-one PVC budgeting solution that will allow you to control, organize, and collaborate on ad spend at scale. You ready to start saving some time? Good. Well, then click on the link below and you can learn all about Shape. The first difference I want to talk about is ad scheduling. One way users can target their ads or even just make certain bid adjustments is with ad scheduling. Advertisers can choose the time of day and day of week they would want their ads to be shown to users searching on Google or Bing. Advertisers can also schedule times to make certain bid adjustments. What advertisers may have to be careful of doing is making the same ad schedule adjustments in both Google Ads and Microsoft Ads by default. It's important to remember that these are different channels, so you need to know how ad scheduling works for each channel and check the data to see what performs best for your accounts. In Google Ads, which is what we are in right now, if you go to your ad schedule page and then scroll all the way down, Google will remind you what time zone your account is, and we can see that at the very bottom. This is because your ad schedule in Google Ads is based upon the time zone that you chose when you created your Google Ads account. In this particular account I just highlighted, we see that we are in Eastern Time. So if this particular account wanted to change the ad schedules and have every weekday target 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., they would have to keep in mind that if they are targeting the entire United States, people on the Pacific Coast would only see their ads from 5 a.m. to 2 p.m. If this does not sound ideal, the advertiser will have to create separate campaigns if they want to make sure that every time zone is going to see their ads from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Now let's hop over to Microsoft Ads for this one. To get to their ad scheduling, you need to go in your campaign settings and then scroll down to your advanced settings. And with Microsoft Ads, ad scheduling works differently. If I highlight over the ad schedule question box, and let me highlight this what you need to know portion. Microsoft clearly states that their ad scheduling is based on the targeting times of the location of the person searching or viewing your ad. So the same advertiser could still target the entire United States and keep the hours at 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. and not have to have several campaigns to execute this. This is one of the biggest differences between Google and Microsoft ads. So I'm going to stress one more time, when you're focusing on ad schedule changes, you cannot make the same blanket decision between both of the channels. The second difference I want to talk about is search partner targeting options. Both Google Ads and Microsoft Ads have search partner networks, and these are other sites allowing advertisers to expand the reach of their search network ads beyond the main Google.com and Bing.com domains. And in this particular section, there are actually a few differences between the channels when talking about search partner networks. Not only do the actual partner networks differ between Google and Microsoft, but the way we can target each network is different too. Also, Google search partners are set at the campaign level, which is what we see right here. I'm on a particular campaign and I'm in my settings and I could choose to include my Google search partners network in what we could see right now. Jumping over to Microsoft, you can see at the top I am in the ad group. So we have to adjust our ad network distribution at the ad group level. Hopping back into Google, Google search partner network includes hundreds of other websites. Ask Jeeves is one example, as well as other Google sites such as YouTube. See here's an example of a search ad on YouTube showing up at the YouTube search results page. By default, Google will automatically include your campaigns in the search partner setting. If you see the results for search partners is subpar when segmenting your campaign data, it only takes two clicks of your mouse to remove partners and just save it from the settings. Unfortunately, in Google, targeting search partners is either an all-in or all-out feature. You cannot target just the search partners in Google. Hopping back into Microsoft Ads, repeating again that we are at the ad group level settings, we can scroll down to ad distribution. So now you'll be able to see that besides Bing, your ads can show on the AOL and Yahoo networks. Now unlike Google, there is not an option to target your search network ads on just Bing.com, and that's unfortunate. Even if you wanted to just target the search network sites, you still have to pick the option of Bing, AOL, and Yahoo all lumped together. But what I like about the ad distribution in Microsoft ads is they have the option to separate the partners by owned and operated and syndicated search partners. 
Now, for whatever reason, if you see that one of the partner options performs significantly better than the others, you have the ability to use a targeting only targeting method for your ad groups. So you do have the option to target just the syndicated search partners, and that'll give you the opportunity to potentially split out your ad groups. You can keep search networks within its own ad group and split out the syndicated search partners in another ad group. And that's a big difference on how you can optimize your campaigns in Microsoft Ads to try to maximize performance as much as possible on this particular channel. The third difference I wanna talk about is in-market audiences for search. If you want to bid differently to groups of users who are more likely to be actively researching or ready to buy in a specific category of products or services, Google Ads and Microsoft Ads both allow advertisers to add in-market audiences to the search network campaigns. We also have the option to use these audiences from a targeting or observation capacity in our settings. Microsoft does call observation audiences bid only on their platform. In both of the channels, we can also increase our bids on these audiences by up to 900%, or we can decrease the audience by 90%. You see, if I try to decrease by more than 90%, I get an error message and I'll have to correct it. So the main function of how you implement these audiences is pretty much the same between the two channels. Now what the major difference about in-market audiences between the two channels are the actual options we have to add to the campaigns. Both Google Ads and Microsoft Ads have help sections where we can download the entire list of in-market audiences available. For Google, we have the link to the support page about audience targeting. If you scroll down, click on the in-market audiences option, you can click the CSV link and an Excel file will automatically download. If you click on the file, we will get a list of all the in-market audiences and the list of networks that we can use each of the in-market audiences. I've already gone through and done the research. So there are about 50 in-market audiences that we cannot use for search. That gives us about 720 in-market audiences on Google that can be used for your search network campaigns. Heading over to Microsoft Ads, they also have a nice help page talking about in-market audiences. And again, we have that link visible for you to go find it. And they do have a question section about what in-market audience categories are available. We can click on the link right there and we will also get another Excel document where we can open it up and see all the in-market audiences we can utilize in Microsoft Ads. Microsoft will let us know how many we can use per country. And you can see on the search network, I am in the United States and we do have the maximum amount. There are only 445 in-market audiences on the Microsoft network. So about a clear difference, about 300 different options that we have between the channel. Now, it doesn't mean that everything Microsoft has can also be found within Google. There are some unique audiences that are only available on the Microsoft network. For example, I know about this particular one because I'm utilizing this category for a client right now. So Microsoft has a social category with subcategory options like romance and relationships or takeout and delivery. Google does not have these options. And there are several other categories or subcategories that each channel has that the other doesn't. So take some time to see if you missed out adding additional in-market audience layers to your campaigns because you assumed they were the exact same between the channels. You may not get as much traffic with Microsoft. You also may not spend as much on Microsoft as you would with Google. But we really need to know how these channels work so we're not being a lazy marketer and just copying and pasting our strategy. The more we understand how Microsoft Ads works, the better our optimization decisions will be. So I only give you a few differences between the two channels. Maybe we can do a part two later on and go through a few more. But let us know what differences you see between the two channels and how you may optimize those two channels differently in some of the comments below. Thanks for watching our video. If you found it useful, give us a thumbs up below. We release a new video at least once a week, so if you want to see more from the Paid Media Pros channel, be sure to subscribe.